Okay, so in a previous video I talked about stress, but that's a pretty tricky word, especially in terms of uh, psychology as a, as a psychological definition. And so I broke that word stress down into two major parts, the stressor and the stress reaction. And today I want to I want to talk about I want to get a little bit deeper into that idea of the stressor. And if you remember that stressor uh, referred to the actual uh, the, the threat or the perceived challenge that we're experiencing. And, um, and psychologists have done a pretty good job of categorizing stressors into four major categories. Four major categories of stressors. So imagine this is you and, and you're driving down the road and let's imagine that you are driving away from the city that you grew up and you're going to college for the first time. You're, you're leaving your house for the first time so you've got all of your stuff on the roof of your car here. You've got all of your dorm equipment and you've got your bedding here and it's all strapped to the roof of your car let's say and you're ready to go you're ready to get out of the house what that represents going to college is a significant life change and that's the first major category of stressors so significant life changes and what this category describes is a significant personal life change, such as the death of a loved one, or the loss of a job, or leaving home for the first time to go to college, or marriage, or divorce, or having children, or all of these really big, significant changes to your life. So if you're interested, you can look at the Holmes and Rye stress scale, and um, it considers the effect of 43 different major life stressors on your life and then offers you a hypothesis about your relative risk for stress-related illness because of these significant life changes. But what that is is really a great list of 43 considered major or 43 things that are considered major life stressors. Um, but the next major category of, of stressors are catastrophic events. So imagine you're driving down the road, you're going to college for the first time, and maybe you're driving through Oklahoma or Kansas, and out of nowhere, a cyclone appears. So there's a cyclone here, and it's ripping apart the town that you're driving through, and that would be a catastrophe. So catastrophes are these unpredictable large-scale events that nearly everyone appraises as threatening such as war or natural disasters like um, like tornadoes and and hurricanes and community disasters and um, as an example one study by uh, I think Susan Salney in 2006 described or, or at least correlated Hurricane Katrina with nearly a tripled suicide rate for New Orleans four months later. And that's related to the nature of Hurricane Katrina as a catastrophe in one of the major categories of stressors that we encounter. And so say you're moving down the road here and and you're already going to college. That's a that's a big stressor on your life. And gosh, there's a hurricane blowing right outside of your or I mean a tornado, I'm I'm sorry, blowing right outside of your car window and and so you've got two major stressors on board. And what if you all of a sudden run over a, a really sharp object like a nail or something and your tire blows out? So your tire just completely blows up out from under you. That actually happens quite often. Um, you know, tires blow or your, your car stalls or, or your engine burns out or something. But that's an example of one of the daily hassles that, that we um, encounter and is another major life stressor, so daily hassles. And so the seemingly minor negative events of daily life such as aggravating roommates or long store lines or forgetting your car keys after making it down the four flights of stairs from your apartment, that happens to me a lot. I live on the fourth floor and I'm always forgetting something and having to run back upstairs or email spam or, or finding dog poop on your carpet. Um, and other examples that start to sound a little more serious that include expectations that aren't communicated very well between you and your spouse or, or your significant other or the inability to let go of an unattainable goal. But sometimes daily stressors um, are related to our socioeconomic status, like maybe we're a poor college kid and um, stress often accompanies inadequate income or unemployment. 
And then for minorities, daily hassles might include racism. So constantly considering whether or not people will trust, like, or approve of your personality and abilities can compound the effects of these daily stressors and and daily hassles. So although these stressors seem little, they certainly add up and take a huge toll. And in fact, many psychologists um, like Lazarus and Ruffin and Kona McDonald considered daily hassles to be really the most significant form of stress. And then the last category that I want to talk about, the last of the four major categories, are ambient stressors. So let me write that in here. Ambient stressors. And these are global, so not so individual stressors that are integrated into the background of the environment. So you can think about um, the city back here, maybe the, the place that you grew up. Maybe there's a whole lot of pollution. Maybe there's a big factory in your town or or something, and there's it's really laden with smog, like um, Southern California, um, or something. But they're the they're physically perceivable, but they're not urgent, and they're hard to control. They're just things that we put up with in our lives in the background. That's why they're called ambient. They're just happening in the background. And so, some other examples include noise or or crowding. Um, but a really interesting thing about ambient stressors is that they can negatively impact us without us even being consciously aware of their existence. We might not know that these are happening, but they're contributing to our stressors. So I just wanted to clarify and say that these are the four major categories that are often um, considered by psychologists as, as the stressors. So the so next step, we're going to move to the, the other component of that stress definition, which is our reaction. So how we respond to stress, but I'll see you in that video.